Jeanette, what do you have in your binoculars? I am looking at the polar bear. You're having a polar bear? Yeah. Yeah, I will see if I can zoom in there somewhere. I guess you can oh, see he's, something, he's wa smelling something white over there. Just a li white little thing. He has been sleeping there, so Jeanette has kept an eye on him. And now he's sitting up at least. Will he go back to sleep again? It's like he was sniffing. He was sniffing? Mm. Or maybe for you? No, no, no. He was sniffing for something juicy to eat. Okay, good. Now he puts himself, now he went back to sleep. Do you have him? Yeah. He's coming over there. He's coming there, he's going close to the water. Oh, he's coming this way. Yeah. You think he can smell us? Yeah, 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 yeah. The wind is, blow the wind is blowing to him. So he gets, to, it it he is gets, to his directions yeah, there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he can get all of our smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said he will show himself when everybody's returned to the boats. Yeah. Because now he is a good. I hope he walk next to the beach just by us here. And so he doesn't go and swim there. The thing is, we are invited to another boat for a cup of coffee at five. And that's yeah. in like 20 minutes. And I'm not putting myself into a dinghy when he's in the water. Are you sure he would be in the water then? Yeah. You know what he eats? He eats seals. And you know where they are? Yeah. Not in our dinghy anyway. We saw a seal when we came in here. Maybe that's his dinner. He's, get, he's getting closer here now. He's walking on the beach here. And I guess that's like 200 meters maybe? Seems to be a big boy. Do you think he will go swimming? Well, if we are leaving... Do you, da do you dare to take the dinghy over, over dinghy. to explore over to there? Explorer. When he is just about to have a swim. We'll see. Maybe we have to wait a little bit then, because maybe he starts swimming now. I wonder what he's thinking. When are the Swedes going to put themselves into a dinghy so I can... Jeanette is taking a lot of pictures, I guess. We have to go through them later. Yeah. He's walking on the beach there. And he's just next to us. I guess you have seen better polar bears on uh, television, but this is handmade from us with, <laughs> lo with love. And it's very close to the Andre yeah. Monument. The Andre that, Monument is yeah, there. Just it's just there. So we were here. It is. And I hadn't a thought of him coming around. No. And he's over. I'm following the line here, the beach. I don't think we can get any closer to a polar bear than <laughs> we are in the moment. No. Because it's like. Can it be like 100 meters in there? I doubt if that's even that much. For the polar bear. Oh. Yeah, and, and he is just in front of our boat there. Sleeping. Sleeping. We are Safety back. Back. Still and we will go and have a look in the front for our little friend who is sleeping up there. It's up there. I will try to zoom in. You see him, the white thing there. Where is my finger? There it is. He's sleeping now. But that's kind of cool. It is, yes. But do you remember what time in the, in the day that we went to shore here? It was midday, wasn't it? o'clock or something. Wasn't it afternoon? I don't remember. But he was not around. You don't think he lives here? Oh dear. So then he was around? Maybe.
So have you recovered from your polar bear experience yesterday? Well, I was thinking about it just now. It happened. It, it happened. happened that we saw a polar bear walking on the beach very, very close to the boat. For, and, and he was there for several hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before he swam over. He was like a king. This is my place. I see you, you tourists have been here, but you know, I just. Now I decided to make a walk by. Yeah. Because this Virgahamna, where we are now, is where. Um, well, we have visited it before, but it's uh, it's a place where uh, people do come, and there's been many people today, and he's just been resting, and then mm, you're all gone. Okay, I'll come now. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm. Mm. And uh, this morning is a cold morning. It's only like three degrees, three point four, and the sea water is six and it's grey outside and it started rolling a little bit because the wind is coming yeah you can't see this but there is a swell coming in so I guess we will have breakfast and go down to Trinity Harbour and then we'll stay there for a couple of days before the wind um, goes down and we can go South. Yeah. I guess you can see here. So we are over here. This bay. We had the polar bear, and he swam over there yesterday. And we are going back in our old track over there. It's a very protected anchorage there. We just uh, checked the weather forecast here on the iPad. Oops, that is not wind, the wind there. And it looks, yeah, we are going that way. And the wind is, yeah, as you can, there. Uh, uh, uh. So we have just uh, not decided, but understood that we will be here until Sunday evening or Monday morning and uh, today it is Thursday So what did you say then? So we are discussing what is the first uh, symptom for cabin fever <laughs> huh? I don't know Can you read it up then? <laughs> this to. starts itching somewhere or <laughs> I whatever to. I have to look it up but I think we have to make the most of it and play some games, watch some movies, movies and eat read some books, eat. eat good. And um, But you have lost your corn, so you yeah. can't make popcorn. No, I can't. You had a bag. It I is somewhere. But maybe I used it uh, when uh, we had um, uh, Jan and Steiner on a visit because... Uh, yeah, but haven't you bought the bag since then? I, I think I, I should have had but I think I forgot. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. so we are out of popcorn for the movie. Night. And I must say, in my life, out of popcorn, I think this is the first time. Yeah, it's a real punishment for you, I know that. I you think I've never been. You are a popcorn lover. Yeah, I think I've never been out of popcorn ever. We are very happy that uh, it's light. 24 hours here because you when you need to re-anchor because of yeah. icebergs coming your way it's good that it's not dark it is yeah so let's go out then and, and uh, re-anchor it's almost snowing i think so yeah. Yeah. so we have a big boy over there coming straight at us and it will be here in a couple of hours or so and we want to sleep so we will move over there it's uh, like uh, it's 10 o'clock uh, in the evening here is it only 10 i thought it was like 11 but yeah well. you're probably right as always so we have re-anchored so i will show you it's over there now the whole idea is we'll go all the way there in there so hopefully can show you tomorrow morning that it's we have an iceberg in there because that is a big boy you don't want to mess around with that one no. do you want do you want to go jump into the bed with no. me now yeah Let's go. but i think we should set the alarm for some 
time in the night and yes. have a check. Absolutely. To see if it doesn't take. Go another way. Yeah. And you will go up and have a look. Yes. <laughs> will you? Okay, so it's uh, 1.30 at night. 1.30 at night in Svalbarden. In Trinitihamna is where we are now. And uh, what are you going to do now, Frederick? He's almost now we, awake. We are He's almost awake. Well, we can go to the anchorage. And uh, here's an uh, iceberg that decided to uh, come floating and why not come floating our way? So now Frederick is going to do what he can. Try and push it away. Uh oh. We don't want it to grab a hold of our anchor chain, do we? <laughs> oh. So rather big. But I was able to push it. You were able to push yeah. it, yeah? Yeah, I pushed it. So this uh, ice bit is coming uh, in from there. It's from the Wagon Green Glacier. And uh, it's a beautiful glacier that we'd like it not to to have all these pieces in the water. <laughs> yeah, now you know what we are doing during the night. <laughs> we are pushing icebergs when we are not sleeping. Who wants to sleep? No, the night so actually the boat Nanook called us up and said, yeah. They called us up, yes, because we did not... Uh, we did not see this one. Huh? We did not see this one. And that was only an hour ago. Still keeping an eye on this guy. And... Uh, yeah. So we started to monitoring when he was around there. And now he has moved. So we have him there on the radar. So he has come this way here. And we are anchored over there. And that is the other one out there. But hopefully it will follow more or less the same. Yeah, I guess there is some kind of current taking them like this. But uh, we're keeping an eye on him. It's not like the one that we had tonight. No. Where we had to push him off, but that was a much smaller one than this one. Yeah, it was. You could do something about it. This one, I don't think this, you could do it. This one is the size of our boat or something like that. Yeah. And now it has moved and is now covering our fellow boat here on the anchorage, Nanook. It's really. Big, big, big. I can't say how big Nanook is, but it is leads at least 40, 45 foot boat. What do you want? Do you see? Now you can really see how the... The icebergs. icebergs. Yeah. So we are there. These two, we think, are stranded. So that means we are kind of protected. Yeah. <laughs> But it was nice last night. They were keeping a really good watch yeah. of all the icebergs. But uh, tonight, unfortunately, they are moving on to the Smearbergen Breen. So they are not going to be here watching out. <laughs> Guess we need to stay awake ourselves. We are checking out the uh, Sysselmesteren's house here. And you can say they, are, they have secured it quite well with wires. And things like this you see so the wind should not catch it and I guess <laughs> look from all directions so the wind shouldn't catch it 
I would guess that is the Sisselman master's house and that is maybe a shelter if you need or some storage because you know but this is a nice place so we met the two guys and they do two months here just the two of them not only in this cabin they move around but uh, they're covering the north coast they said yeah so they would be at Musamna and hmm. Every, everywhere yeah. and they have supplied for two months and then yes they have their small little boat and they go around yeah so they don't have a refrigerator so what they do is that they pick the ice and uh, do that uh, well, not every day, but uh, if the weather is warm, which it was when we met them, they had to pick the ice twice every day. <laughs> yeah, that's old school. That's old school, yeah. yeah. You want to have this little ice for the gin and tonic, or should we go and get it from the the big one? Big. The big one. There you have the small ones. Mm -hmm. And there you have the big mama. I Can you hold the camera here? So we're gonna have some ice for our gin and tonic. How much ice do you want? <laughs> I don't know. Oops. Oopsie daisy. I think that's maybe enough, but we take a little bit more because it's fun. I think. What That's do you think? Big one? Yeah, one time more? Yeah. Do you want to do this? No. Whoop. Look. A real East Wing axe. This is a big one. I'm telling you, it's huge. So if it's running ground here, it's like more than 15 meters deep because we are in there and maybe on 13 or yeah. 15 or something like that and there is another big over there beautiful blue color yeah but what a great day we have yeah it has been a really great it has drizzled all day yeah and the weather prognosis for tomorrow is drizzle, drizzle.